In this video, I will show you all the basic functions of open tunes that you need to know to create your own 2D animation frame by frame. OpenTunes is open source software and that means it's free to download and use. Just follow the link down here. It takes you to the official download page that currently looks like this. If you scroll down, you will find the download button for OpenTunes and below the terms of use, you have to select your operating system, either Windows or Mac OS. If you start OpenTunes, it should look a lot like this. And by default, OpenTunes comes with a sandbox project. And the sandbox project is a great place for your first animation exercises and experiments. But if you wanna create something real, a short film or even just a scene for Instagram, you should probably create a separate new project for it, which is a little bit tricky if you wanna save it as a location other than this. You should never go in and change the save in file path. This is not what it is meant for. You should instead create a new project at a custom location. And that's a little bit tricky. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a separate video. For now, for your first steps into OpenTunes, the sandbox is more than enough. Let's name our scene. We have to name our scene uh, first steps or something like that. And down here you can check the screen resolution is 1920 times 1080 pixels, which is a very common screen resolution that is used by many TVs and monitors around the globe at the moment. And down here you can see 24 frames per second as the frame rate, which is a pretty great frame rate for animation. Before we hit create scene, make sure that you have automatically saved every five minutes activated. This can be a real lifesaver if your software crashes or your computer has a power outage or stuff like that, then you will never lose more than five or 10 minutes of your work, depending on what you set down here. And now we're ready to jump into the program by clicking create scene. One of the most important tools that you will use all the time is the brush tool. And in the bar up here, you can change some settings of your brush. You can set a minimum and maximum size. So if you have a pressure sensitive device, you can um, start with the minimum size. And if you press harder on your pen, you will get a thicker line. You can undo most things that you do in OpenTunes with Control Z and our line disappears. The accuracy setting up here describes how, well, accurate your lines will be converted to a vector format. If your accuracy is very low, let's set it to one, then the software will smooth out your lines. For example, if I draw a very jittery line down here, as soon as I let go, the low accuracy will cause it to look a lot smoother. If you set the accuracy to 100%, your line will look exactly as jittery and wobbly as you drew it. The smooth setting causes your line to lag behind. If you set the smooth setting to zero, you will draw exactly where your cursor is. If you set your smooth setting higher, your line will lag behind and you can use that to steer your line with the other end of the cursor. Just give it a try and see if you can use this tool to improve your lines. It helps a lot if you wanna create like a perfect circle or perfectly smooth uh, lines. You can switch pressure sensitivity on and off here. So if it's not working for whatever reason, make sure you have this checked. Another tool that you will use a lot besides the brush tool is the selection tool. The selection tool can be used to select a single line on your drawing. And here you really feel the advantage that OpenTunes is a vector software because you can manipulate that single line infinitely without it ever getting pixelated. So let's say I wanna change the thumb, I can just drag it and change it until I like it more. And this gives you a lot of flexibility to tweak your drawings. 
With the control point editor, you can have even more control over single lines. If you click on them, you see all the edge points of a single line, those blue ones, and you can click them and drag them. The purple ones are tangent points with which you can change how the line flows through that edge point. If you have some points that make your line very wobbly, like this one and this one, you can just go ahead and select them and delete them. Besides dragging the tangent to change how the line flows, you can also click directly on a line to drag and drop it to a shape that is more to your liking. If you're working with smooth lines, your tangents usually look like this. If you click on one of the handles and you move it up, the other side will move down. They are linked together. On sharp edges, those tangents are broken. You can move them individually from each other. If you want, you can convert connected tangents into broken tangents by holding the Alt key while you click on them. As you can see, now I can move them individually. I don't need to hold the Alt key again, I can just click and drag the tangents. If I do click the Alt key again, I convert the broken tangents into connected tangents again. If you don't like the width of a line, you can also change that. You have to expand your toolset palette down here and there we have the pump tool. And with the pump tool, you can make lines thicker or thinner. As you can see, we have many options to change the lines even after we drew them. If you want to move around in your scene, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. As you see, because it's vector, nothing will get pixelated even if we zoom in very large. With spacebar, you get the hand tool that allows you to shift your viewport around. And if you want to see the entire picture, you can right click anywhere in your viewport and hit fit to window and this will fit the entire camera view into your viewport. As soon as we started drawing, OpenTunes created a drawing on our timeline and the timeline is here located to the right. And this is a small difference compared to other animation software. Our timeline is a vertical, not horizontal. So our animation starts with frame one of the animation here, and then it goes to frame two, three, four, five, six, and so on in this vertical axis. All we have to do if we wanna create the next frame of our animation is to hit the down arrow key on our keyboard. By doing that, we shift it from frame one to frame two. With the up arrow key, you can go back up to frame one. Now let's go down. If we are on frame two, we can just start drawing in the viewport again, and you will see that it created a new drawing over here. We now have two drawings located on our timeline. The drawings are named A1 and A2. It's not showing the A anymore, but these drawings belong to a stack of drawings that is called levels in OpenTunes. And here in this panel, you can see all the drawings that belong to a level. If we draw on the frames right next to an existing level, it will add the drawing to that level. So if we go down one more frame using the arrow keys and we draw our next frame, it added another drawing to level A. If you draw anywhere on the timeline in a frame that is not next to an existing drawing stack, we could just click on frame six. As you can see, there's no drawing stack nearby. And if we draw now, we will create a new drawing level. And in this drawing level that is named B, we just created drawing one that you can see over here. Usually you would do either the entire character in one drawing level, or maybe if you separate your character to different layers, you would put the arm on one level and the body on another level. 
but levels are not to be confused with your layout order because for the layout order we have the columns in the timeline at the moment everything is on one column and on one layer but we can click on the little handle here at level b click and drag it over and put it on column two now this chubby face is one layer in front of column one let me shift that back so our drawings don't overlap for now. At the moment, every drawing is just visible for one frame. And if we hit play down here, we can see that our animation is going by far too fast. Like none of the images is shown long enough. You can show one drawing for longer by clicking on the drawing and using that gray handle down here to increase the exposure. So if you want to hold drawing A1 for six frames, we have to drag that handle down all the way to here. And now we can see that frame A1 is being held until on frame seven, we have drawing two. We can also make this show up for longer by dragging the handle down. You can also drag the handle up. If you want to delete a frame, you can always click on it and hit delete. You can undo this. You can select a range of frames by clicking somewhere, holding shift and clicking somewhere else. Now we have that whole area selected. And if we hit delete, you can see that drawing A1 is now completely gone from our timeline. But drawing A1 is still over here in the level panel. And we can take it out there. We can click on it, which takes us to a single view mode where we can only see that single drawing. What we usually see was the camera that also sees all the other layers. But now in the level panel, we can drag this drawing out and back into the timeline. If we click on the timeline, we will also go back to the camera view. As you can see now, we can see the white background again. And there we have it again. There is our drawing A1. Now, as I'm shifting this down, it also shifts everything else down, but I want to close that gap. I can do that by dragging that entire A stack by clicking on that handle here and dragging it up. One important thing to be aware of is that those drawings are linked. If I take the drawing A1 out of the level stack and drag it into the timeline, you can see that our animation now goes from drawing A1 to A2 to A3 and back to A1. If I change anything about that drawing, let's add a fun hat to our character, you can see that this also changed in the level stack. And if we go back to frame one in our timeline, we can see that our changes affected both the drawing A1 that goes from frame one to six and the drawing A1 that goes from 13 to 18. Those drawings are linked. This is good news because if you have an animation that repeats itself, you can do changes and it will um, be updated everywhere on your timeline. But you also, of course, need to be careful if you don't want them to be linked. Let's say I want to take that A1 drawing as a base. If I copy it with Ctrl C and paste it with Ctrl V, you can see we, we once again get the drawing A1. This is no good. This drawing is still linked. So what we can do is to get a duplicate drawing of drawing A1 that is not linked is we can click on it so it opens in our viewport. We can click and drag to select all lines. Hit Ctrl C. It's important that you copy these lines. Don't copy the drawing from the timeline. We want to copy the lines. And if we now go down here to frame 19, which is right below our drawing stack, we can hit Ctrl V and we pasted the lines into a new into a new drawing, which is named A4. Now this one is not linked to the drawing A1. If we draw him a mustache, you can see that he only has the mustache on drawing A4 and not on drawing A1.
One function that you will constantly use while animating is called onion skinning. You can find it over here. If you navigate to any frame, you can see that in this column we have this half red half green dot. If you go below and above in the same column you see those yellow dots. You can click above to make this red dot appear and this will make your previous drawing show through in red. If you click below you can make the next drawing show up in green. As you're navigating around your timeline you can see that you can always see the next and the previous drawing shining through. It doesn't even have to be the next drawing. You could say that you want to see the previous drawing and let's say your end keyframe over here. You just need to keep in mind that as you're navigating around in your timeline, this distance also shifts. If you always want to see the drawing that is on frame six, you could, instead of using that green bar, move a tiny bit to the left and click here to get an onion skinning drawing that is nailed to that specific frame. If we now move the time cursor around, you can see that the blue dot stays where it is while the red dot is moving with the time cursor. And you can see that drawing six is always shining through in green if we are before that drawing and in red if we are after it. Next up, we're going to take a quick look at colors. A color palette is tied to the level. You can see that we have a color palette here that's called level palette A. And we have the black color here that we were drawing our lines with. If we want to fill our shapes, we can use the fill tool to do that. This is the bucket right here. You can press F to get that fill tool. And we have to create a new color swatch down here. You can do that by right clicking and selecting new style. And here we can pick a skin color. Let's say it's like a little bit of an emoji thing. So um, let's, let's make him a little yellow. We can use the color sliders here. And then we can just click into our shapes to fill them. Up here's an option that can close gaps for you. Let's see how well that works with the image over here where I left, left a huge gap. Uh, it's probably not able to close it, but we could set it very high. Maybe it can do it. No, it doesn't. I actually would have to close this line and you could do this by drawing an extra line or by using the contour point tool to make sure that the lines connect. And now we should be able to fill this with no problem. The cool thing about colors in OpenTunes is that they stay linked. If we change the color in the color palette, let's say we want him to be blue, I select the color. So I have the color swatch picker here and now watch up here what happens if I change the color down there. The color changes everywhere. So this is really cool. If you already did your animation, if you already colored it, you already finished it, but you feel like, hey, I don't want this character to have a red shirt. Let's give him a blue shirt. You can change that very easily. So that concludes our quick, very superficial overview. As you can see, it's a very powerful software. You have a lot of possibilities, a lot of options. And uh, don't worry if it is a little bit intimidating at the beginning, you will get used to it as you start with the first exercises. Speaking of which, this video is actually part of our big 2D animation class. So if you want to learn 2D animation, stay tuned for the next video where we jump into some animation principles and rules that you have to know to create good looking animations. I hope I could make the start into OpenTunes a little easier and I would be very happy to see you in my free 2D animation class, learning some actual animation skills. Have a fantastic day, keep on animating.